This morning, I'm inviting you in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter number 12. The book of Revelation, chapter number 12, as we walk through this book, we're getting to the point where if you pay attention to some of the things that we're studying, and you are watching world events, you can begin to see some things formulating toward end time events. Uh, much of uh, what is going on today is foretold uh, in the Bible. And uh, there are problems which no human government will fix. Uh, they're just issues that throwing more money at will not fix. Uh, we are not addressing the moral crises. Uh, we are not addressing the anti-Christian uh, crises. And uh, I know that uh, everywhere we're hearing peace and safety and prosperity, and it does appear that on the human side, but when you begin to look at that same situation from the Bible, there are a lot of cracks in the dike, as old timers used to say. So we're in a very interesting part in human history, and we're a very interesting part in our study of the book of Revelation. I began chapter 12. I did not finish. I only went to verse 12. And uh, uh, here we are. That the entire frame of our current discussion is in the confines of the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. Uh, the Bible talks about a seven year tribulation period, and really that's the seven last year of Jewish history to usher in the coming kingdom of Christ. It ends very badly for the world. It ends very gloriously for the Jewish people and for the Christians. The middle of the tribulation period, there is an event that takes place that will usher those three and a half last years in. It's an event that is called the abomination of desolation. It is a foretold, knowable, perceivable, predicted event. It's an actual event in the Bible called the abomination of desolation. What it is, is all of a sudden in the middle of the tribulation period the Antichrist who has helped the Jews rebuild that temple then goes into the temple, sits down on the throne and declares himself God, outlaws all other worship uh, except him and his satanic institution. That is an event. That's called the abomination of desolation. And then the next three and a half years are really the worst holocaust for the Jewish people that have ever been. And they would be wiped out except God protects them. And the Christians, Jews and Gentiles both, will be slaughtered by the multitudes. And it's really just a very terrible time. We have not yet come in our study to the last of three series of seven judgments. Uh, we have, we've uh, done the seals, we've done the trumpets, but not the seven bowls. Uh, that's coming. But everything that we're now studying is within that bubble of that three and a half year period. And we are introducing you to seven personalities, singular and or plural. And uh, what we did in chapter 12 we, uh, last week we introduced you to a person called a woman and we explained that is Israel. In the 
Old Testament, Israel was always called the wife of God. Not the bride of the church, the bride of the church of Jesus Christ. That's the New Testament. But the wife of God, the Jewish state in the Old Testament, she's called a woman. Second personality in, introduced to us is uh, Satan, destroyer, destroyer, deceiver. Uh, he is the driving force behind all the evil that has ever been on earth. This is to a limit his domain now, which Christ will take back, and he and uh, his group will be cast into the lake of fire forever. But in the last three and a half years of the tribulation, Satan, having been cast out of earth, out of heaven, and the abyss, sometimes also called a sea, uh, unleashes all kinds of demons. And the last three and a half years of the tribulation, while the physical cosmos events are earth crushing, much worse will be demonic activity and satanic activity, which will come to a head. And folks, if you are observant, especially this uh, week, <coughs> as the world celebrates uh, Halloween, which by the way, uh, comes out of Europe, and, and when it came to America, it came very innocently, but it was a demonic holiday. It was a satanic holiday when it came from the northern Gulf countries. And we see now that in our country, it is now beginning to show its light and move in the same direction. Uh, so we studied Satan, and then of course the child being the Lord Jesus Christ, who is now at the right hand of the Father, but coming back. And then we were introduced, and this is where we stopped last week, Michael, the archangel. We, as I explained last week, know nothing about this other than what the Bible has to say in these few verses. The activities on earth somehow will also penetrate some activity in the heavenly. And Michael and his angels will come and fight with Satan and his angels because Satan will lose and be confined. Michael is one of the archangels, chief angels in the Bible. He has particular care over the Jewish people. That's who Michael is. And, and later on in this book, we'll have a few more things uh, to uh, say about Michael. Now then, we are uh, starting where we left off, and that is in uh, verse number 13 of uh, uh, Revelation chapter number 12, and we see Satan's activity on earth uh, in relation to Israel in that last three and a half year period. So begin, we left off where Satan got booted out of heaven. So in verse 13, and when the dragon, Satan, dragon in the Bible always stands for a ferocious beast. That's what a dragon stands for. And that's what Satan is. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, Israel, which brought forth the man-child, Jesus Christ. From Genesis all through the Bible, all through the last 2,000 years of church history, Satan has always been the persecutor of the Jewish people. Because through the Jewish people came the Bible and came the Lord Jesus Christ. That activity will now be greatly accentuated because now Satan knows his time is limited. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now, not obviously literal, but symbolic. Uh, the eagle, or a particular brand of very large vultures, were a very 
common bird are a very common bird in the Middle East. So when John uses by divine inspiration uh, this language, we're given two wings of her great eagle, uh, fast and swift and powerful. Jewish writers would have no problem understanding uh, what this means here. That she might fly swiftly into the wilderness, into her place. I mentioned to you last week, I'm going to mention this again. The entire Middle East, in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period, will be in a death struggle war. Except three little countries. Ezekiel talks about that. I don't have time to go into all that history. But Ezekiel talks about three little countries to the southeast of Jerusalem and Israel will not be involved. God will keep those three little countries at peace and that's where God will have Israel, the Jewish people, flee until the Antichrist is uh, conquered. Now here's something I want you to see for your comfort. Long ago, uh, we're talking over 3,000 years ago, God already was in control and planned what was going to happen. And 3,000 years ago, God had already made arrangements for the Jewish people to have a place to hide during the great tribulation time. And folks, the same God watches over you. The same God watches over me. And the same God watches over this church. And don't ever forget that. And so uh, the woman had two wings, eagle's wings, fly swift into the wilderness, into her place. A pre-designed place in the desert by God ordained at the beginning of eternity where she is nourished. Time is a year. Times is two more. That's three and a half. That's three and a half years from the face of the serpent. There is no nation on earth where there had been as many wars. There is no people on earth where there have been as many enemies and as many attempts to wipe them off the face of the earth as have been against the Jewish people. It has not worked. Though multitudes of them have been slain, yet that nation has survived. That city, over 40 wars in their history, sometimes totally annihilated, has always rebuilt. Because God said Jerusalem is an eternal city. And they are an eternal nation. And Palestine will be their eternal home. And Jesus Christ will be their and our eternal king. And when God says eternal, it can't be any other way. That's why when God saved you and promised you everlasting life, you can never be lost. When God does something, He does it forever. So uh, uh, they were nourished there in their in her God prepared place for three and a half years from the face of the serpent, from Satan. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Uh, flood and uh, water usually are emblematic, and it is in this case of humanity. The largest standing army in human history is yet in the future. Multi-millions army under by Satan's power under the forces of the Antichrist, who is an economic and political leader. And that war is primarily for the annihilation of the Jewish state, but it will not happen. And so uh, it says the serpent cast out his mouth 
water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. The greatest attempt of armed force against the Jewish state is yet to happen in the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now, strictly speaking, that's not explained. There is one major hint, though, of what this means. First of all, we have already studied that there will be multiplied, massive, worldwide uh, storms and earthquakes. That leads us back to something that happened in the Old Testament under Moses. Moses, the type of Christ, had an enemy, Korah, who was a type of Satan. And Korah and his bunch set out to overthrow Moses and his bunch. You remember what happened? Literally the earth opened and Korah's whole bunch was swallowed into the earth and the ground closed back up. The most logical interpretation of this verse is that literally the earth will open up and swallow those armies. Now that's not the only thing that's going to happen to them, but at this particular junction, that, if we interpret scripture with scripture, probably uh, is what is going to happen. So, and the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened up her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Always has been, always will be, but now it's accentuated. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now, not all the Jews will be out in this little three country area safe. There will be Jews all around the world. And many of them will by now, once they, once the Antichrist sits down, goes into the temple, sits down on the throne, and declares himself to be God, according to Bible prophecy and according to the Lord Jesus Christ himself in the book of Matthew, that moment the Jewish state, the Jewish people have their eyes open and they recognize, oh my Lord, he's the Antichrist, but we've rejected the truth of Messiah. That happens when he sits down on the throne. So now then, it's all out in the open, and now it's all out war to get rid of all the Jews. And that's when he goes to make war with the remnant of his seed, which keep the commandments of God. Many, many, now very few Jews are being saved because it's the church age. The minute the church is gone, God's time will go, table goes back to the Jews, and multitudes will be saved during the last half of the tribulation period. The remnant of her seed, spiritual seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, this is not only Jews, this also includes Gentiles. Now then, I have time to introduce you to the next personality, and that is a beast out of the sea. John says, I stood upon the sand of the sea, the mass of humanity, and I saw a beast, a beast is a wild animal, rise up out of the sea, out of the sea of humanity. There's another interpretation, but I, I don't, don't buy it. That, and the sea does also speak of the abyss. But uh, there, there's one interpretation that says that uh, the sea, the, he rises straight out of hell. No, no, he is an actual living person, just like the Antichrist is an actual living person, rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads speak of the last, speak of all Gentile world powers that ever have been. You saw this description 
of the Antichrist earlier, uh, beginning with Assyria, Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, all the way up to Rome. And ten horns, uh, that is the, uh, that is the uh, seven hills of Rome representing seven nations and powers. And upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, Antichrist. Antichrist. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, swift, speaks of Greece, and his feet as the feet of a bear, Babylon, strong, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, Rome. Ferocious, and the dragon gave him the, his power. The Antichrist is a satanic, empowered human being. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Satan is the originator and the head of the godless world system without Christ based on greed, corruption, immorality, and power taken by force. The power struggle that we are now seeing unfold in the capital of our own nation is clear proof of satanic inspired activity. You need to remember that. Now, talking about the Antichrist, saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. First of all, let me say this. Once we're back on Jewish territory, which is where we are, the person in charge of a nation and the nation are interwoven, are one. Sometimes it means the person, sometimes it means the nation. They are just interwoven, not like our government or any Gentile power. So what is said of the man is true of the nation. What is said of the nation is true of the man. So we're interweaving the Antichrist and his kingdom now under Satan. So when it talks about one of its heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. There are two things involved here. Number one is the nation, which is primarily the revived Roman Empire, which has been dormant now for 2,000 years. Not really dead, just dormant. And it will come back to rise to power unto the Antichrist. But there's another interpretation, which is really very viable, and that is the Antichrist, by satanic power, will feign a false death by deception, and be revived, so-called, and the world will wonder after this man. So the ruler and the government are intertwined, and it's the same godless, satanic scheme to get the world to follow this evil person. And the world wondered, after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast. They worshiped Satan. Do you know in America today now we have satanic churches? Yes. Did you know that satanic worship is alive and well in the United States of America? By the way, when you reject the Bible and you reject God and you reject, reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you are giving allegiance to Satan. And they worship the dragon which gave power to the beast. 
and they worshipped the beast, the Antichrist, saying, who's like unto the beast who's able to make war with him? And they think, you know, he's the greatest ruler we've ever had. Nobody can withstand him. But they were reckoning on Christ. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue three and a half years. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell therein. Look, uh, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Now notice this to blaspheme his name. His name in the Jewish terminology, and, and really in our terminology too, stands for everything about God. Who He is, what He is, what He says, what He does. It includes the Bible, it includes Christians, it includes the Jewish state, it includes Palestine. The Antichrist will be the ultimate ruler to speak against everything about God, His name, and his tabernacle, all worship places that are true, and then that dwell in heaven, all believers past, present, future. He will be the ultimate arch enemy against God. And it was given him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. One world ruler. I don't know where your theology is on this, but let me tell you something. You look around the world, it's not just America that's got all these issues. It's a worldwide problem. And it is preparing for a worldwide ruler on Satan in the first three and a half tri tri years of the tribulation, he's going to do wonders. He's going to put things back together. The first three and a half years of the tribulation period are, are predominantly peaceful times of prosperity. Those are the times when all Christ's rejectors will be sucked into that. What will then unfold the last three and a half years? A one world leader. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. True believers, born again believers who know the Lord, who are saved by Christ and know the Lord and, and are true to the Bible will be the only exception. Real believers will not sell out against God in favor of Satan. They will endure even unto death. It has happened multitudes of times on planet earth and it will continue to happen. But the greatest onslaught, not only against the Jewish state, but against multitudes of people who will be saved in the tribulation period will yet happen. The greatest onslaught against them will yet happen. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship the Antichrist, who's, though who will as be, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, here's something very interesting. This is the eighth time you have this word, if any man have an ear, let him hear. The first seven were messages preached to who? The seven churches. It concluded with, if any man have an ear, let him hear, say the Lord unto the churches. But the church is no longer here. By this point, the church is with the Lord in heaven. And just to show you how minutely accurate the Bible really is, now it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear, Period. No more church. Long, long. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. I pause there to say this. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. 
He that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. There will come to planet Earth a time of reaping. Reaping for the lives that have sown to self the flesh and the devil. There will come a reaping for them, says the Lord. But the reaping for true believers will be an eternity with the Lord in heaven. And I'm going to stop with this little statement. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. That's a great place to stop. Next Sunday, Lord willing, I am going to introduce to you the last great false preacher, prophet this world will ever have, beginning in verse 11. But I close with, here's the patience and faith of the saints. We in our beloved America do not yet, for the most part, endure any physical persecution. But we do emotionally. We do. Uh, believers who are straight, who uh, refuse to live the lifestyle of the world. You know, the Bible does say, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We now have multitudes of churches led by a multitude of preachers who don't care how long you, how you lived in the world. You can smoke and drink and cuss and go to dancing and uh, play in the bar, uh, but as long as you come to Sunday, all is well. That's a lie out of the, out of the devil's hell. The Bible says without holiness, nobody shall leave the Lord. And if you're living a good Christian life, you are s swimming upstream against the tide of what even preachers are now preaching from the American pulpits. I'm telling you, there are going to be a lot of Baptist preachers and all kinds of preachers in hell because they have lied to their congregations for whatever motives, which I am not to judge. But I'm telling you, folks, stay patient. Keep the faith. Live right. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Don't get caught up in the hoopla of the world. It is a broad road that leads to perdition. It is the straight and the narrow way that leads to God. Be saved. Live for Him. Love Him. Read your Bible. Pray. Attend a good church. Let your light shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the saints that will endure the great trial when it comes to planet Earth. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please? Every head bowed and every eye closed.
there. It, we can read it. Give us the faith to accept it and the grace to live it. Lord, have your will and your way in every heart and mind and life. I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing 123. Number 123.